Good afternoon all and thank you for tuning in to today's AMA. We have a lot of great questions from our community we want to dive into firsthand. But any new questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Today we have our lead developer David and we also have our senior network engineer Brinka here today to dis assist with the many questions that came from our community. Before diving into the development aspects, I thought I'd start off with a couple of really great questions for one of our community members, Zero, regarding the GameFi aspects, which covers a very wide range of subjects. And then we'd dive straight into the development for the rest of the AMA. So firstly, one of the questions we got asked was the beam migration and staking taking ages. Our token beam migration utilizing the official beam bridge and beam swap has been completed. We have just decided internally to avoid doing a full announcement until we have sufficient liquidity to ensure trading doesn't result in substantial slippage. Regarding the staking, it is taking us longer than expected. We really wanna do something unique for our holders and we want to ensure our utility platform rewards loyalty. That was priority from day one. The first issue, which we kind of, which kind of caused the substantial delays if you're in our community for some time, was the audit. You know, we're in a space now within the ecosystem where you need the audit before you deploy. We only got that through at the end of last year. So ultimately, it was pointless for us as a team to kind of start working on the staking contracts because the audit could have resulted in the contracts changing drastically. So since we had that audit completed just at the end of last year, our contracts are deployed on Beam Testnet. Our staking platform is built on our new website. But due to the complex nature of the staking, we earn D tokens and then redeem NFTs in a DEX like environment. We still have a couple functions that we're testing and a couple features which are just not working as efficient as we want it to. So the system works, but it's a bit cloggy in places. And our next stage in regards to the staking is, of course, the NFT integration into the game. But the priority for us as a studio is making sure Open Alpha is in a suitable position. The final question that came from Zero, and I feel a lot of the people in our community ask very frequently, is regarding set listings, um, i.e. providing a clear update or discussion on that factor. So whilst proposals are confidential, we have several listing proposals on our desk that we have all reviewed. And it's very important for us to kind of strengthen that on-chain exposure. So this is why we're migrating to Beam with liquidity. But also it's very important to ex expand our exchange structure as well. Being honest here, the difficult aspect with some of our proposals is the listing fees. Uh, being full front, sometimes we're talking six figures plus. So we really want to avoid dilut diluting our circulating supply as much as possible. And in the process, as some may be aware, there's some new news which is coming out in the ecosystem, which coming from regulators, and it kind of adds a little bit of concern. We are already on a top 10 major exchange, which is insane. And regarding a exchange update, my personal route would be for us as a community to kind of rally behind the studio and potentially push towards a buy bit listing. The reason being is our open alpha is on the horizon. It's a great opportunity to reward our users who vote our project with an airdrop. And hopefully in the end of this, have our token listed in the innovation zone on Bybit as our next exchange. Hopefully that helps address a couple GameFi related co concerns from our community. And from now it's gonna be full front diving into the game aspect. Awesome. Kicking off with the first question, David, another great question from our community member Zero. Why has there been so many delays, open alpha and promise features? You know, is this feature creep? Is this bad PR? Is this bad development communication? What's your view? I think it's a bit of everything, to be honest. Um, firstly, we are sorry that we have delayed the game from our original launch of the end of the month. And we're sorry that we are we took too long to tell you. We were very confident that we would be able to release it in time. Hence why it was so late when we decided to say, you know what, let's push it back. You know, we've we could try and go all nighters trying to get this done, but let's not. Let's do it properly. Let's delay the game. But yes, we originally said January a long time ago. And then when it came to 
around December, we realised we wanted to make the best MMO we possibly can. So in the end, we decided to delay from January to March to give Brinker more time to do more multiplayer functionality. And also the gameplay side, where we have a new profession now, blacksmithing. We have a new dynamic weather system. We have lots of new features that wouldn't have been out for launch. So the game is bigger and better for the delay. But mainly the main reason for delay is we want to make sure when you do play, when you do log in for the first time and press the play button, it works. You can jump in, you can chat to your friends, you can create friends, meet people. And again, multiplayer with everyone else doing the same thing. And that is a lot of work. That is a hard task to do. And even major AAA games are now struggling on major launches, you know, how divers too with the server issues they had on launch we kind of don't want to do that we're being a bit more reserved we're being a bit more cautious so we don't want people to run into these issues so that's the reason why we decided to delay a bit longer it's not dynamically longer it's not gonna be like months longer we're hoping to be done in weeks um we haven't really outlined what date we have internally yet because there's a dynamic testing period we want to do, and that will determine how good we launch. We could have a server stress test that all goes well, and it's like, oh, it's perfect, let's release it in a couple of days. Or we might find that the server performance is not as good, and then we'll reevaluate. But we are very, very close. We are very, very close. Thank oh, you very much you. for that, David. <laughs> I was going to mention as well uh, feature <laughs> creep. So, yeah, there is a bit of feature creep and bad PR on our ends as well. We should have told you earlier, but we were very confident we would have been able to do it in time. But unfortunately, with all things development, things happen, unexpected issues crop up. Sometimes it's you know our doing, and sometimes it's not our doing. Um, sometimes it could be a bug in the game engine, which is nothing you can do about. You know, there's so many things that could cause an unexpected delay, and unfortunately that has happened. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the end, Harley. You can go on to the next question. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. I'm sure the community will really appreciate that kind of head overview. Uh, dropping on to yourself, Brinker, I have a really great question for you, actually, coming from Zero again. Some great questions coming from our community members. Um, the netcode seems to be like an obvious pain point that needs to be addressed. Do we need, need more devs? What, what's the issue there? Can you help explain? Well, netcode is not uh something simple in itself you know and we're aiming for uh you know the 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 target is uh is huge we're not just doing another mmo we want to have you know the the, the best mmo uh and and the technology is very novel and and of course you know problems arise that's you know uh that comes with the territory if you're trying to do something new if you're trying to to break, you know, the the, the existing, you know, uh, misconceptions and so on, it's going to be you're going to bump into walls, you know, and you'll you'll have to climb them. And then you'll find a bigger wall. You know? So that's just how it is. Um, I can say that uh, it's going, you know, along, you know, very well. So the the, the all the, the the stuff that we at first didn't have. Uh, uh, you know, didn't even know if it was possible, if it would work. We now know it works, so we're we're just you know going towards that goal. But we we already proved it, and it's uh, you know it, it does work. Um, and um, yeah, so now it's just doing the the you know the, the hard work, just uh, you know plowing through the, the the issues, the problems. And uh, yeah, of course that you know having more people would be better. <laughs> That's uh, that goes without saying. Although, although um, at this point, have, you know, bringing on more people for would would delay the launch because when you bring someone you know to the team, you'll have to onboard them. It takes a few months for them to get acquainted with the code base and uh, you know having all the um, training and and everything that goes you know takes time and also resources so i would have to you know take some time off my development work to train that person and and have them you know uh, probably be productive only after i don't know three months or something like that 
So uh, at this point, you know, it's just not possible uh, due to the, you know, we want to launch this as soon as possible. Uh, after the, you know, after this this launch, and depending on the financial part, which I'm not a, you know, <laughs> privy to or privy to, um, you know, that that will be seen, you know, whether we expand the team or or not. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> yes. Also, you know. <clears throat> Having a bigger team also means uh, redundancy and, and comes with other advantages. Uh, so we definitely want to expand the team. That is, you know, uh, for sure. But, you know, at this point, not really, you know, but we do have plans for that in the future. Mm, no, I really appreciate your insight there, Brinka. I think just dropping on to another query from the community, which I think is, I guess, the one people want to know. Um, could you give a little bit of an insight into what went wrong with this launch? You know, we, we said confidently as a team, we're at 95% complete a few days before deadline. And, you know, now we're saying it's a couple of weeks. Could you provide a bit of insight for our community to what happened and how do we grow from this? Sure. So, well, you know, first off, the delay is on me. <laughs> So I asked the team to to delay for uh, uh, some more time, uh, and more time. I mean, it, it's going to be a few weeks or or something like that. Depends on how things go, uh, as David already stated. Um, so basically, you know, we implemented a new system, which is you know uh, the the system that is the definite system. You know, so the we call it the entity system. Um, and this allows for you know a ton of things, both for you know uh, networking, but also optimization. And there's a lot of advantages with this new system. Um, it's very complex, and it just you know turned things around because we developed to you know the game was developed to another system, another kind of you know I won't go into too much detail, but it's just a way of programming. And this one is a little bit different, and you know, uh, it took us some time to adapt all the scripts, all the all the the stuff that we had done for the the old system. This new system requires, you know. And by the way, so this system is not uh, something that came out of the blue. We had planned for this, and we're implementing what was planned almost two years ago. So we're we're you know sticking to the plan, but we knew that it was a very complex system. It would take some time and. So now we definitely we finally implemented it. Um, it's still not stable enough that I'm comfortable releasing you know something with it. So I want to do some more tests. Uh, I want to do you know make sure that uh, th that it is, it is working at least as well as the old system. You know possibly better, mm -hmm. but you know we we need to make to to test all of that thoroughly. Uh, and but mostly the, the the main reason was that it lacked you know because all this time uh, meant that we didn't have time to implement three main features that I really wanted you know so mm -hmm. one is group interest management which is the ability you know to support a greater number of players by reducing the amount of data that is sent to each player so it's kind of a optimization uh, technique uh, which would allow us to have you know dozens, possibly even hundreds of players on the same server instead of just uh, single digit numbers. You know? um, also, the entity system culling, which also optimizes the server, you know, so this uh, allows to, you know, for instance, entities that are not being, uh, there's no players around, are have no business being, you know, uh, drawing performance from the server. So uh, mm -hmm. this would also allow more more players per server. Um, and also, in the long run, more entities, so we can have more NPCs, more uh, mobs, whatever, you know, on the server. Mm -hmm. um, and also server matchmaking. So this is the ability to launch servers on demand, you know. So when the server is full to capacity, then another server is spun, and uh, so players can always join the server. So what we mm -hmm. didn't want, basically, was to, you know, have someone jump into the, to, to the game, you know, click the multiplayer button or the play button, and then be either refused the connection, you know, because the server is full or mm -hmm. have a really, really laggy experience, you know, and have a really bad, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, first thought of the game, you know. So mm -hmm. we don't want that, you know, we want to make, make it, you know, the user experience is, is the, the, the most important thing. 
and also, you know, but also have like the stability to build upon. We want a, a stable base. We don't want to make a system that will, you know, cater to whatever target we have and then fall apart, you know, because it's it's mm. wobbly and, and so on. So we want to have the best uh, and most stable, uh, you know, base that we can work on, you know, in, and put more features on top, but, you know, in a mm -hmm. stable way that can uh, be handled in the future. So this is my explanation. So finally, just the, the last thing already, you know, David also touched a bit on that. I wanted to have a stress test uh, with as many people as possible if, before we launch, you know, because we don't have, mm -hmm. uh, we just, all the, the tests that, that we made were just with uh, the developers. Um, and, you know, having everybody on the same server or, uh, I don't I mean everybody, like a lot of people on the same server would give us some data that we can then mm -hmm. f use to fine tune the, the, the server. So the server capacity, the type of server, whatever, you know, we want to have uh, a better idea of, uh, of how it would handle and so on. And as David mm -hmm. already stated, if that's all of those insights give us, you know, uh, a reason to postpone yet again, then I'm for, unfortunately we'll have to do it, you know. We don't want to, to release a, a faulty product, you know, and, and have everybody uh, have the wrong idea, you know, of, of the game and, and ditch it just because, you know, we, we state that is, this, is, this is an alpha. <laughs> we can put how many disclaimers we want. <laughs> if people have a bad experience, they don't care. You know, they, they'll, they'll bash and they'll have the wrong idea anyway, you know. So we want to, to make sure that, and, you know, with the caveat that it's, it's also it's an it is an alpha, so it's possibly going to break. It'll have it'll have bugs and and you know performance issues for sure. You know, but we don't want them to be like a, a deal breaker for for people. You know, so we mm. rather take some more time and and uh, and you know work things out the best we can before the release. Yeah, first impressions are such an important thing. Um, as we have Pele on the stage as well, is there anything you would like to add to that? Uh, yeah, Are you, can you hear me? Because I have three different sound cards. This is my studio. We, we can hear you pretty loud and clear. Very good. Uh, Harley usually tells me I'm too quiet or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I can add something. Like another thing as well is we talked about this like whole uh, what is an alpha thing. Um, and, like in the background while we're working with Domi, I'm also talking to like friends who are like streamers on Twitch, etc. Um, and we also think like when we do the open alpha, there's so many people waiting and, you know, streamers going to be playing it and so many people will see it. So I think we also, you know, really want to ensure that as, uh, as both David and Brink has said, especially David, you know, it's, we feel like a lot relies on it. And even though it's an alpha, we really want it to, to be good because there will be a lot of people playing and we want them to have the right impression. And uh, I was talking to this streamer just the, uh, the, the day where we had to make the tough decision to delay. And I was just thinking about it, like, what if, you know, what if the servers are down and, and, and people, everyone sat there looking at him streaming, stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it's important to do it the right way. Um, it's kind of, I guess, the only thing really to add. Uh, Brink have said everything mm -hmm. technically about the servers and stuff. Um, so, yeah, you can uh, yeah. go to the next question. Awesome. Uh, David, this one's for you. We've got a great question coming in from another member, Collision Course. So. I think Brinker touched on this a little bit, but is there a plan to get a bigger team? I think a lot of people ask that because we are a small team, but we are hitting milestones and achievements. And it's interesting to take into account that sometimes when a team grows, although that looks good from the outside, you're kind of, there's a lot of conflict, you're working, you're stepping on people's toes. So I was just kind of wondering, what's your thoughts on, is there a plan to get a bigger team? And how are you doing now to make sure we deliver everything? Yeah, I'll, personally, I would love a bigger team. Um, <laughs> I think we've outlined that we do need additional network devs to join the team. Content side, I'm mostly on the content side. I'm more in the middle. And we have content developers that work on the gameplay side, and we have Brinkers working on the network side. I feel like the gameplay side, we're fine. We have enough. We are producing content at a reasonable pace. The game's in a reasonable place. But networking is our bottleneck. But I agree with Brinker. If we bring in someone now, it'd be the worst time because we have to onboard that person. 
you know, simple things like sending over contracts, making sure they sign the NDA, getting them access to our tools, our dev tools. That takes time. And I don't think people will like it if we delayed the game for another week or two to onboard this person. And sometimes with networking, it's so complicated, it would take even longer. But a lot of people um, sometimes get the misconception of if we double the team, we double the throughput. Yeah, it's not necessarily the case. There is a diminishing returns with bigger and bigger teams, you know. And I feel like we could make we could get a bigger team, and we won't get into bottlenecks. But there is bottlenecks. There's you know additional costs we have to have. Um, you know, the bigger the team, eventually we might need to have a producer to handle all the tickets and all the tasks that we need doing. So there is growing pains for growing a team. Um, but, and also the financial side as well, we are a free to play game. Uh, we will eventually be reliant on more uh, other monetization methods. And, you know, we want to have a stable company with a stable runway and a bigger yeah. team, you know, makes it you know harder to pay for, pay for developers. Developers are expensive. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we will gain an additional network engineer. I think that's a given we need that extra person. Mm-hmm. But depending on the success of the game, depending on how many people play it, love it, you know, and all the other things, you know, that come with a launch of a game. Mm-hmm. If we make tons of money, we of course we'll get a bigger bigger team to make even more content, grow the game faster, put more content in. But it's too early to tell. Hmm. Yeah, I think actually I was gonna leave this question till the end, but I think where you finished off your question leads on to it perfectly um another one of our community members apologize if i say your name wrong arvleesh actually dropped a very similar question that ties in with that and i think it'd be a good one for me to answer so they mentioned that i appreciate you're not selling any nfts before they are actual usable in the game but i'm concerned about the financial balance even though the team is small it costs a lot to fund to bring your vision live and it's it's a great question um, our philosophy since day one, myself, Pele, David, Brinko, we all share the same philosophy. I mentioned it in our previous podcast where we, we want to change how things are done in this ecosystem. It's great to talk about finance balance and our team is small but effective. And as David mentioned, sometimes if you grow a team too large, there's a lot of work conflicts going on. But in front of everyone today is our community. I can confidently sit here and say, even though our raise was two years ago, uh, we haven't done a NFT raise because of our philosophy. And, you know, we raised in a market where some other projects, uh, without naming who, raised substantially more, you know, maybe five or ten times more than we did two years ago. And some don't exist today. But we, I can sit here today and confidently tell everyone we have many years of runway under our belt. And that is in direct fiat and stables. That's not in, that's not reliant on the dummy token or our liquidity reserves, that's completely separate from our runway. And that's how things should be done in definitely the web free ecosystem. We're building an everlasting MMORPG and it is one of the most difficult genres. But, you know, with our team's expertise, the front facing of our company, you know, we've got a great track record to make that happen. So hopefully that helps, you know, touch a bit on our finances. We have a great runway. Uh, We have a great strong minded team. And we have a great track record to go forward. So bring it on to that, Brinka. I've got another great question from you. Um, before diving in further, could you just explain to a lot of people in our community who maybe are not aware, what, what is network and architecture? We say it a lot. Um, we say it all the time in conversations. And if possible, could you provide like a brief overview of like the features coming in Open Alpha and the features coming in, in the future? I think that'd be really great for everyone involved today. Well, I'm not sure about brief. <laughs> you know, I'll try. It. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm going to to you know try to yeah be as brief as possible. All right. So um, networking is actually more than multiplayer. You know, so it also encompasses the the back end, for instance, you know, all the databases communication between the the client which is you know the, the game you have installed on your machine and the server or servers in our case um you have uh you know uh, a ton of of uh you know uh, of technology that needs to work in tandem uh flawlessly basically so uh our technology 
or our networking uh, is centered around numbers, you know, so uh, we want it to go as high as possible, have as many, uh, n not be limited by the, the, the you know, the, 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 the capping of, uh, like, for instance, having uh, the, the, the server dictates, you know, the amount of players that are the server type or, you know, capacity, pr processing capacity dictate the type of, um, uh, the number of players that we can have or the type of gameplay that we can have. So uh, we decided to go on uh, what's called a serverless, you know, technology or, or paradigm. Uh, it, it, it's a bit misleading. It's not serverless. It does have servers. But what, what it means is that it can scale almost infin infinitely, you know, so you can have a, a, a server, you know, for instance, um, you know, let's call we, we have a game world is called the realm, you know, in our you know lingo. Um, so for each realm, you can have multiple servers. You know, so you can have uh, and they're not the same as as shards or or you know meshing as someone suggested earlier. Um, it, it's a uh, it's a different concept. So a server or or an agent, as we call it, will handle a piece of the world, and it could be any piece. You know, so and it could be as small as a building, or as large as a you know whole region. Um, there will be multiple servers allocated to each realm, and each server is dynamically allocated. So if a realm has a lot of players, more servers will be instanced and allocated to that uh, um, you know to this uh, realm. And if less people are playing it, then less servers will be allocated. If a server just drops, you know, crashes or something like that. The state of the game is shared across all server, all, all the agents within that realm, you know, which means that another agent can take over immediately, you know, almost uh, instantly, um, and all the players will be migrated. It's called a host migration uh, to that uh, new agent or server, you know, uh, almost instantly. Um, so this, you know, the, the ability to play. Without hindrance from the, the 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 technology side, and have no limits, you know, from the hardware side, uh, was paramount to us. So we decided to go and and use this this type of technology, um, and also, you know, from the the back end, also scale. So the the database is um, also serverless based, so we can have as many requests as we want. Uh, the the requests are being routed through API gateway, which is a uh, you know also a serverless uh, uh, you know way of of routing requests to to the servers, well not the servers actually to the lambdas, which also is a, a, a serverless technology. So every bit of our architecture is geared towards having no limits, you know. And once this is you know uh, fully operational so we already have this in in place but once we have all the systems in place so everything developed uh we expect to to host to be able to host an almost unlimited number of players per realm probably be capped at some some limit like 5000 something like that for gameplay reasons but ideally we can have as many as, as we want you know so this is the the plan hope that i answered i don't know if you want me to, oh, to no, expand I a little more <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think I think you smashed it. It's a very big question, but um, it's it's really great for people who may not be aware, just to kind of get an understanding of you know a little bit about network and architecture, what it means and what it does for the company, and why is it so tricky. Um, dropping onto a bit more of a, I guess a fun question, David. Epix dropped into our chat and asked a really nice question. What is the size of the map, and you know if if potentially you have any comparison to show. I'm not sure of any comparisons, but I do have the numbers here. Uh, so the worlds are actually square, but of course you have water around the uh, like the islands and stuff. So it's probably less than what I'm going to tell you because of the water. But the main island is 2K squared or two kilometers squared. Hillrum Island is one kilometer squared, but half of it is locked off for future content. And you got a tutorial which is uh, a quarter of a kilometer squared and another island that's going to come out for open alpha, which is also a quarter kilometer square. So I would say total if you add them all up around four kilometers squared. Hopefully that helps. 
I have no idea how to compare it to any other game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that definitely helps. It's a great question a lot of people have asked beforehand. And I think the one thing to note is this is the current build for Alpha. We've got a mainland, we've got Kabito Island as well, we've got Hill Rum, and of course, Nemo Island. And in the future, the idea of our everlasting game. And as you mentioned perfectly there, half of Hill Rum's cut off for a new kind of experience for our players. And that's really exciting. So, Another thing to kind of drop back on with you, Brinka, I think a lot of people discuss about bots. So many games nowadays, you have to deal with bots. And since this is one of the most difficult things to handle with MMOs, especially people who potentially generate so bots just to try and crash the server, do you see this as a problem? And how would you handle this manually or put in some security measures? I think a lot of people who plan to play Domi Online just like to know how that's going to be dealt with. All right. So my background is in um, uh, systems administration. So I, I've uh, administrated you know, databases, uh, data centers, actually, uh, in the past. So I know that, and you know, we've been hacked <laughs> numerous times. So I know that security is paramount. And we're taking that seriously from, from day one. So everything at you know, the baseline security is already in place so everything is secured either with you know by encrypting all communications you know using https etc authentication on every request you know we authenticate when connecting to the server to make sure that you know it's not spoofing uh, another player's uh, session we have unique session enforcement so you can connect from multiple devices uh, and so on um, there is uh, an additional security hardening phase planned this will be done, you know, at a later stage because that security hardening will make development more difficult. No, not, not difficult, just more cumbersome. Uh, so we're leaving it for later, and it's just, you know, it's pretty secure as it is. Um, we also plan to have a, a self-reporting system, so you know, you can uh, tag someone for spam or harassment or cheating or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll also have uh, automated activity monitoring based on logs and also, you know, through the agents in the game, the servers, um, that will raise flags for, you know, further investigation by our team. Um, mm -hmm. And we plan to have a dedicated support page for reporting issues of this and other natures, but also, you know, cheating specifically. Um, mm -hmm. There's not a lot we can do other than, you know, track and then fix as we go along. We're aware that anybody with enough time and uh, motivation, you know, can can do can hack uh, or or you know tamper with a uh, with a client. There's the, there's just no way around it. You know, you see big big companies like you know EA and stuff being hacked. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's uh, they have like dedicated teams. You know, probably uh company wide you know dozens of developers on you know trying to fix that system valve and etc mm -hmm. and they still get hacked you know so it's just not uh something that we can prevent or 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 you know promise that won't happen with us what we can promise is that we'll be on top of it and we'll try to fix it as soon as possible and, and we, we have already uh uh you know uh, uh a deployment pipeline that will allow us to to make very quick changes to whatever you know mm. uh, uh, problems we we encounter. We can make a, a change like in, in in a few minutes. We can you know deploy a new build that will fix that issue if necessary. So you know so mm -hmm. that's the the basically the the answer to that. Brilliant. I think just touching on the thought of bots. You know you took a really great summary from a from your side as a networking i was wondering if um Pele, you can chime in a little bit on that front maybe how bots are com competated from a gameplay sense not just from a security sense yeah yeah no first of all we're in good hands with brinka here uh, every task he works on he always goes on about how something needs to be done a certain way for the sake of uh, avoiding cheating and stuff in the future but um I'm sure there'll be people wanting to use bots. It's that happens in every game, but because like even if there was some superior anti-cheat that David Brinker came up with, people would be using macros, for instance. They're always bad actors. And we talked about this the other day. Uh, the four of us, right, said we have to disable any form of playing Domain in a single-player environment, um, like closed alpha is now. 
uh, or potentially you add because right now i think people can choose between like multiplayer or, or single player and testing the closed alpha but we have to make sure that there's no way of t playing dome in a single player environment because the only way for us to really combat uh, potential botters even if we do all we can to avoid it like i said people can just use macros for instance to train uh, strength level uh, is to have game masters check in on players often and have a report system as well um, so it just comes down to how good we are at like enforcing this to how good we are at looking at it um, like if you're seeing a, a person who's, who's you know standing fighting you walk past him he's fighting some wolves he's not saying anything you shut him up he doesn't re respond just report him we'll check uh, and we'll have the tools to check if the person is botting or not so and then of course they're banned so there's no like uh, yeah 24 hour like no we, we won't accept it um, because it, it ruins everything. The leaderboards are like the the heart and soul of Domi, and uh, we, we won't allow cheating. But uh, I'm sure we'll see it, especially in forms of macros, and we will fight it. I guess that's all, uh, all we can say about that. Yeah, I also want to chime in. It is actually an industry problem. It's not just yeah. us having the problem. Apex, with that cheap software being bundled in, I don't know how which what witchcraft they managed to get uh, the cheat stuff to get into that multiplayer matches and all if you saw. It's a big problem, and a lot of companies use these off-the-shelf tools that track cheating. And a lot of players don't like them because they, they need more and more lower access of your computer right to the kernel level to stop you cheating. And we don't want that. We, we, do, we don't really want heavy DRM or crazy anti-cheat software that tracks everything you do, you know, the privacy concerns of that as well. And... And these days, you even got like monitors that have AI built into them, quote, quote, AI, which <laughs> tracks your screen and displays on League where the enemy's going to pop out of the fog of war. And it's like, we can't stop that. <laughs> it's so fundamentally, it's part of your monitors, like the crosshairs that help you aim. And it's, we're going to get cheated, but we'll do everything we possibly can to make it as less likely as possible. It all, yeah, it all comes down to to literally being there, having game masters, people watching. That's really, that's all it comes down to. In the end, I think, because like you said, it's it's an industry problem. It happens everywhere, and you just need to to be around to, to catch them in the act. Mm -hmm. So I think we've got a, another question from Arvlish again. Um, it's a little bit just touching on the general reasoning for Alpha. So he he states. I know alphas mostly are technical tests. Your game already looks quite good. So even as good as many games would call it nowadays, early access. So he, he was kind of wondering what made you decide to go the, the classical way, you know, closed alpha, open alpha, beta release, instead of being one of these games that are in early access for five years. Yeah, um, I think I'm a bit old school. I like the old alphas and i don't like early access i think like harley you just said early access games that will never come out of early access on steam for example there's thousands of early access games they never they will never get live and it's also kind of an excuse for thing companies to i don't know be less oh what's the word accountable for their issues oh it's a beta don't worry about it um we don't really want to go out room. We're going to have alpha, which is the pinnacle of it's going to be broken. But we we don't really want to stay in there for long. We do want to go into beta quite quickly and launch. We have I have no plans to stay in alpha for five years. <laughs> and yes, our game does look quite good. It's probably because we do want to be with the best MMO we possibly can. We probably could have launched it earlier with less content. But in, we are we want to make the best. That's probably mm -hmm. why we spent so long in Alpha to try and make a really good game right out the get right out the gate. Um, so yeah, a lot of games were probably classes as beta, um, mm -hmm. apart from the networking issues we currently have. But yeah, we just want to build the best game, and we got so many things planned. You know, hopefully you look back at when we launched beta at Alpha and be like, wow, what amazing, what a big change. You know, mm -hmm. from even our players who've played the closed Alpha, you know. It's night and day compared to what we showed you for open alpha and what they played on closed alpha. is uh, is like a fundamental game with all the new stuff we've got. So hopefully you feel the same for beta, and hopefully you feel the same when we launch. 
But yeah, there's no there's no hard and fast rule when it comes to naming schemes, but I quite like the old way. Hopefully that answers your question. I, I think that's that's a great way. Uh, old school, just like kind of hitting that target MMORPG nostalgic graphic of being old school as well. And I, I love that very, very much. I think the, the interesting point as well is within the game we're building, it is the alpha stage. But the fun fact is, is you've seen our progression if you scroll through our socials. If you saw the first ever post we've done a dummy till now, that alone is a drastic improvement. But the difference between the closed alpha and the 1.3, just visually, you know, mechanic, more professions, it's, it's just incredible. It also makes it so all of our previous videos we can't use because the new game just looks so much better. So that's a that's a very positive negative side to kind of bring things forward. Um, I guess touching basis on another question from our community before we can dive into a couple questions in the chat before finishing up in about 15 minutes. Um, any ETA on the new website? You know, our website currently is a little bit outdated and they, we've made so much accomplishments since having the old website. So I was just wondering if you have any insight into that, David? No, we plan to launch the, the new website for Open Alpha. Mm -hmm. And I've posted some screenshots in the general chat of what our new website will look like. Even the connect the wallet page for our staking. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will launch when we do Open Alpha. There's a few tweaks we still want to make, you know, grammar checking everything and making sure it all runs beautifully on our browsers. But fundamentally, it is done. It will launch for Open Alpha. Brilliant. I think and, that's. And that's... Uh, on the first picture, it's a video of our trailer going behind the scenes of that. <laughs> I was trying to find it, trying to search through. I was like, oh no, <laughs> what's the leaks? Yeah, it'd be great to tie in our new website with our new Open Alpha. So every blog post would be shown on the Open Alpha new website and it's also nice to kind of be like oh look open alpha 1.3 is fresh so is our website so is our socials and so is the future of the content as well i think as for questions that kind of came in from the community i think we we've kind of hit them all so i was just wondering if anyone in the call today has any great questions that they want to ask as of now um the only thing i can think of brinker bringing it back to you I believe you know your your love for networking lies deep, and I think uh, you may have missed out stating to our community what multiplayer features are coming out for Alpha, and what multiplayer features are planned for the future. So people get an idea of what's coming in the Alpha stage and what's coming after. Whilst a couple people drop a couple questions, could you help explain that? Sure. So the features for for open up the multiplayer features for for open alpha is going to be mainly you know there's a, a lot of uh, features that are not uh, you know that are, are are in the background like serviceability, optimization, enhancements you know uh, capacity to handle more players for each server stuff like, stuff like that you know but for the the you know the public the the main feature is the Know the the mobs, the, the the entities, the enemies will be authoritative, server authoritative, meaning that they'll run on the server, and uh, that means that you can attack uh, a mob and see other people attacking other mobs. Now at this stage, for open alpha, we're not going to do group attacks. So you, if you are attacking one mob, then it will be locked for other players. You know, so other players won't be able to attack the same mob. Uh, this will change in the future, and our plans for the multiplayer, you know, the, the other features that are that are coming, is, you know, our plans are are to be released, you know, as they're being finished. So uh, we we won't have to wait for another, you know, uh, another milestone. You know, we'll we'll be releasing them uh, once in a while. Um, so periodically, and those would be, you know, so a lot of combat enhancements, of course, but also, you know, item swapping. So you can drop an item and other people can pick it up. Uh, loot snatching, so you can see loot and probably, you know, just swipe it <laughs> for yourself. Uh, group attack, so in the future you'll be able to attack, you know, multiple players will be able to attack uh, the same NPC uh, or the, you know, enemy or mob. 
player versus player combat, of course. Uh, travel to other islands. So right now we're stuck on uh, Stanfear Island, uh, but pretty soon we'll be able to travel to other, other islands as well. Uh, boot time optimization. So this is a big one. Um, right now it takes a long time to, you know, the, the startup sequence takes a long time. It's doing a lot of uh, heavy lifting. That will be dramatically uh, decreased in the future. We already have plans for that. It's just that, you know, there's a lot to do <laughs> everywhere. So um, we will also have regional realms, which are, you know, geographical distributed game worlds. So you can have, uh, you know, uh, uh, less latency, you know, quicker uh, feedback from the servers and so on, because the region is closer to you. The, the server is closer to you. It's in your region. Um, and the big one is the agent system coming, you know, later this year, I don't know, maybe mid mid 2024 20, something like that um and the agent system is what what i discussed earlier you know the the system where you have like multiple servers right now we'll have only one server for for alpha we'll have only one server per per realm um and this will limit the amount of players that can you know access it um but with the agent system it will have multiple servers per realm and so we can we'll have near infinite player capacity uh, seamless host migration, all the stuff that I already talked about. Uh, we'll also have an optimization stage intertwined with this one, which is, um, you know, the, the big thing would be the, the dynamically loaded sectors in terrain chunks. So, for instance, we can have uh, the jumping into the game way faster, you know, so the loading mm -hmm. will take much less time. Uh, and also, uh, you'll you'll be able to have, um, you know, you'll, you'll be able to run on on lower end devices, mobile and consoles and stuff like that, which at this point is not a, a possibility. So all of that will come throughout, you know, 2024. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of it will be will be will have to be left for early 2025. But you know, so pretty pretty uh, exciting stuff to to be hyped for, you know to <laughs> for yeah i think everyone turning up today and uh, especially you know easter bank holiday weekend uh, every, everyone's excited to play dommy and it's definitely been great for us to kind of have this ama talk to the community recordings being recorded so future people will be able to view that in our channel and it's just kind of a great time to talk with the community get those questions in and Hopefully, we've answered everyone's thoughts and feedback. Um, there is questions in the event chat, though. Uh -huh. Aha. And general as well. OK. Well, drop in first one in with Fitz. I assume staking will come after Alpha. Do we know how staking will work? Will you staking for tokens to get NFT or for NFT? And if so, do you know how much staking will get what? Awesome. I I'll do a bit of a high level overview because it does get quite complicated. For our staking platforms on testnet, we know how it works and we know how it builds. We're just checking to make sure the functions work. Um, the UI UX, because it's a bit of a complex system, sometimes you've got to wait or sometimes the site doesn't refresh when you want it to, that sort of thing. So the system is, is pretty simple. You come onto the platform, you stake your dummy, and you see loads of different pools. And each pool, like a DEX, will give a different reward. And that reward will be an NFT. And whatever that reward is, is only obtainable by Domi holders. So you come onto the platform, stake your Domi in, uh, let's say, some sort of really cool looking skin. And the skin's called, you know, a cat skin. So you stake your Domi and then you earn D cat. So that's our D token. That's like a separate ERC token, which you're earning. And once you earn, say, 10 of those tokens from your staking platform, you redeem the NFT. The NFT has a limited cap. So once all the NFTs are being redeemed, that's it. There'll never be any more. And if we set, say, a max of 500 NFTs, in reality, only maybe 450 would get minted. Because if you have a fraction of a D token, you then can't mint the NFT. So it's quite a nice way for us to kind of make it as a reward utility pro platform. In future, we do want to have kind of farms or some way for our users to earn someone else's nft 
or earn a partnership token that we're working with within the game. That way it's a utility platform, but it's not unsustainable. So many projects now, um, a lot of people are like, oh, stake in, you know, this project's done it in a week. Yes, but their platform is you stake your game token, you earn a game token, that's, that's the end of it. It's, it's not sustainable for the holders and it's not loyalty and it doesn't bring utility. It's just kind of like fake organic rewards. So hopefully that kind of gives a bit of an insight into a top down on how staking is. Um, if you guys, David, Brinka, see a question you want answered, just drop in. Uh, yeah, I see a couple. So <laughs> I think uh, Shaz Angel asked if you are on the server alone, since others are full, will you, you be uh, will you be kicked? Well, you know, from a, 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 like a a design perspective, no, we can be on the server alone. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if for from a gameplay perspective that would be desirable, uh, but uh, there's no reason, you know, uh, like programmatic or, or you know, development-wise, there's no reason for kicking you out, even if you're the, the one alone. We do it all the time, you know, <laughs> when we're working, mm -hmm. we're sometimes on the development server alone, so, you know, it'll be handling uh, one player or a thousand players just as as well brilliant i can rapid fire a few of them as well yeah go for it go for it uh so how much content does the game have right now to keep us busy so um we have around seven quests about 50 monsters three islands Eight professions, blacksmithing, alchemy, fishing, cooking, a melee, magic, range, defense. Um, and they're all up to a level 100. They have content all the way up to level 100. And we expect you to take ages to get to level 100. And we're hoping <laughs> we can release content faster than you can keep up. Um, that's the goal. But you should have enough in the game for you to have a lot of fun for what a long, long time. And we've got a few quests in the pipeline. We've got a dungeon under development. We have a boss that we've started working on very, very early stages. Um, so yeah, we've got lots, lots planned. Is there going to be raids? Um, that would be cool. Uh, I'm not saying no, but that probably be a, a bit, little bit way in the future because of the networking side. We might be able to do solo dungeons or solo raids a lot more quicker, mm -hmm. but multiplayer will be a little bit longer. Ah, one um, for you, Harley. Uh-huh. Uh, will there be some marketing to cater to more Web2 people? Yes, <laughs> I think that's a, that's a fun question across all of you know the Web3 ecosystem. We're building a game for the masses of Web2 as well. So one thing we can reveal is when we have the date confirmed, we will be hitting it hard with a cinematic release. We do have a couple content creators, like what Pelly mentioned, a couple streamers in the Web2 ecosystem. Uh, we have a 12 month marketing plan, which we want to kind of kickstart as soon as Open Alpha starts. We are always looking out for new potentials and trying new things, especially with marketing. You know, we can always throw money at the problem, but sometimes you need to be a bit more clever than that. But we, Talking with our team and also the team assisting us with a bit of a 12 months marketing plan, you kind of need to create two different targeted marketing campaigns to suit two different targeted audiences. Web2 users want different things from Web3 users, and that's fine. We're here to cater for both audiences. So it's great to kind of be in that position whereby we have the product that hits the Web2. Uh, we have the utility NFTs and token sites that hits at Web3. And I guess one aspect before we kind of hit Web2 hard is we want to implement a couple of Merit Circles SDKs to make onboarding easier. You know, I'm talking things like custodial wallets on account creation. So then a Web2 user creates an account and they've got a wallet. You know, that, that alone is just such a big issue solved. Still, still got to work towards that, of course, but that's definitely something we want in place before we kind of hit that Web2 audience hard but we have a very nice amount of content creators and streamers we want to work with uh, we have a couple of platforms that i like the look of this is kind of marketing agency 
people. And it's just making sure we are mindful of resources in terms of marketing, but make sure they hit and hit that target focus. A lot of projects release and they're like, ah, oh, you know, we're doing a big one million pound prize draw. But when you look into it, it's like it's a load of NFTs that have no use case that they state are worth a grand each, but it's just kind of fake numbers. We we don't want to do that. If we if we set up a tournament or we set up a competition and it has a number associated with it, it needs to be backed up by something real. Um, hopefully that helps kind of understand how we aim to kind of target each ecosystem individually. All right, the next uh, question. Oh, I can take uh, yeah, I can take another question. So from Crypto Monk 108. Uh, once Open Alpha begins, we expect Domi to be in continuous operation through beta and final product, or should we expect days of, or weeks of downtime throughout the process? So just one thing, final product is something that probably won't happen, <laughs> meaning that it won't ever, you know, the, this is like a continuous uh, development project. So we, you know, we'll always keep adding stuff and so on. So there'll probably not be a final product. Uh, now, I think uh, regarding the continuous operation, yes. So we're uh, planning on having the, the servers be always online. There will be some, you know, uh, planned uh, maintenance downtime. And if problems arise, you know, there, you know, so as I said, this is alpha. We expect bugs to happen. So if they do, we'll have to, uh, you know, there, there might be problems with the, the service stability still. Uh, but we expect this to be way better than the, the closed alpha. Um, so, yeah, you know, going forward, uh, it'll be, you know, just uh, uh, like the, the game will, will be run just like if it was uh, the, the, the full release, let's put it that way. Maybe David wants to chime in or say add, add something to this? No, I think you answered it. I have nothing to add. All right, next question. I'm getting these from the uh, events. Oh, yeah. Fred, by the way. What is the ideal max server capacity? The quick answer is we don't know. There's three numbers to this. How many can the server handle? How many can your GPU handle? Because, of course, we have to render all these people with all their clothes and weapons and various VFX that they might have. And three, how annoying is it? If we have to say 10,000 people and they're all in the same city, it would just be people everywhere. You won't be able to see where you're going. So it's something that we will evolve over time. The first one would be more, what's the server capacity like? And then it would be, okay, how heavy is it on your GPU to render everyone? And we, there's ways we can improve that. Um, and then it's how does the game feel? Does it feel crowded or does it feel just right or does it feel empty? So there's various levers we can pull to make the game feel feel alive. But that would be an evolving thing over time. Hmm. Another one for me is how viable would it be to share the Jira board or any other app you guys to manage to develop? That's a tricky one. Um, I know Minecraft has a public Jira, which works quite well. But we have to be careful about not inadvertently leaking any sensitive information. So, for example, someone finds an exploit, like a gold dupe, if you will. We want to have a section of Jira which is only us can see. So we don't want to advertise that to the world. Um, and there's also a little bit of player expectations. I might create a ticket in Jira that says, let's create a new underwater boss. <laughs> and that might sit there for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the players are really looking forward to it. Yeah, that's and I might one. cancel it because I realise <laughs> it's too much effort. Um, so there's a few tickets in our Jira that have sat there for a very long time. Um, so we have it's a balance. I like the idea, but we have to be careful. Same with the I public I, API I, as well. I actually don't like the idea because uh, we're switching tasks all the time. You know, so new priorities arise and so on. And this gives a false, um, uh, you know, uh, false sense of, of progress to the, to the community. So I, I'd, I'd rather have like a, uh, you know, a, a separate board, not a Jira board, but like, um, I forget the name of the, you know, like a well, like, like a simpler board, you know? Yeah, Trello, like something like that. 
that is managed separately from the the from, from Jira because Jira is always changing. We're always changing. You know, something comes up, there's new stuff that take priority. So it's it's you no know, uh, it's not a something that I would do. But you know, you're mm-hmm. you're in charge, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I just I... answering just answering one question regarding the um, the amount of of players like if there's like ten thousand players in the city, you we wouldn't render the 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 whole amount you know you would render the players that are around you, but if the player is you know off to a certain distance, you you wouldn't be able to see them anyway. So those will be there'll be a, a, there's a, you know optimization technique called LOD level of detail. So if you are farther than a certain amount, you'll you know you won't have like a, the full character. You'll have like a a, a minor you know a, a trimmed down version of the character. And if you are further than that, then it will be even a less detailed one. And if you are further than that, you won't even be visible. You know, so we can have a lot of characters. You know, ten thousand is probably way too much. You know, <laughs> but uh, we can have a lot of characters in in the same screen and render them you know both the the in the client machine so the the your computer can render them but also and that is adjustable dynamically so we can adjust how many characters the the you know it can render based on the processor mm-hmm. of the the client um but also from the technical from the the the, the multiplayer or the networking aspect is also as i said we we'll, we can have you know we have 10,000 players we want to support 10,000 players in the same city then we have you know uh, a certain amount, let's say a hundred um, servers, to handle all of those players because they won't be all in the same exact place at the same time. So mm. uh, there's ways around it, but we wouldn't have you know that many players in the same same realm, you know, probably. Mm-hmm. Well, looking at the time, guys, uh, I think we've been here for maybe over an hour now. I think it's really great. That we were able to get through all of the questions pre-proposed and answer a couple new ones as well. So I thought I'd just give the floor to you guys if there's anything else you want to add just before we close up today's recording. Maybe sorry that we delayed open alpha. Um, we didn't want to do this, but I feel like it is the right decision because you're gonna get a much better game at the end of it. And we can't wait for you to play, and it won't be very long now. Yeah, I would say the same. Uh, not happy that we had to delay it. It's a tough decision, but mm-hmm. you know we just have to do it. Sorry, you know it's just something that uh, we can't release. Uh, uh, even at this stage, we can't release a, a faulty product. You know that will uh, anger people and and uh, make them have the wrong impression. Of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, developing uh, one thing that we we never do is developing something. You know, rushing something just to to get it on time. It's better to delay and have it you know more stable, more you know uh, well done, rather than just rushing it. Just meet the deadline, but have a you know a, a bad product on your on our hands, which will then have repercussions for you know the the future and and incur in technical debt and so on. So I think mm. it's you know it's not maybe not what you want to hear uh, as a player, you know, but that this is just how development works, you know. We we want to have a good product, and it takes time to do it. Yeah, I think um, just to summarize myself, I think it's worth noting that us sitting here today on the stage, we want to play the game as much as much as you guys do. Um, you know, having the ability to potentially meet many of our players in Stanfair or maybe go to Saints Rest in the local Morning Star Inn, it's it's just brilliant, and we we're so excited to have that. So it's been really great. We've got some really great feedback from the community. It was nice that we were able to sit here and answer a couple of questions that the community asked. And to be honest, this went so well. Potential future AMAs. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'd, no I'd, I'd, I'd say so. You know, I think uh, we don't have any secrets. We're <laughs> uh, a really open company, you know, uh, and uh, if you guys want to do this more often, I'm I'm game. You know, I, we can work out. Uh, Whenever you know, like a periodic schedule or something like that. So let, mm-hmm. let us know what what you want. Brilliant. On that note, I'm gonna stop recording.